Hi, this is Erin Blair from Blair Family Woodcraft. Together with my husband, I own a woodworking business where here in our shop we make everything from gigantic dining room tables to coffee tables to art to teeny tiny little cutouts on this super cool machine right here, which I will tell you more about in a minute. Um, this is a special video for our campers. Hi, dolphins. Um, and thank you to your wonderful teacher for including me in your learning. Today I'm going to teach you a little bit about the scroll saw and how to make a stacked cut. But I'll start by telling you a little bit about the saw. It's my favorite piece of machinery in the shop because I can cut out anything I can dream up. If I can draw it, I can put it on wood and cut it out on this machine. And the reason I can do that is because it uses the teeny tiniest little blade. So I'll hold one up for you. See how small? And in comparison, this is my jigsaw that I use to cut out thicker wood. Look how big this blade is. Still not big to some of my blades here, but compared to this little guy, pretty big. And this one's pretty small. So given that I have detailed blades, I can cut out anything from unicorns. I have the state of Virginia here. Can't forget the Eastern Shore, very important. Oops. I have a mermaid, another smaller little Virginia, and check out how small this one is. Tiniest little cutout. This is my favorite place in the world. It's a place in New York called Lake George. And then I can also do bigger things. This is a different lake up in Vermont called Lake Champlain, and it's made out of beautiful wood called walnut. Has anybody ever heard of a walnut tree? This is what the wood looks like. And it doesn't have any stain or anything on it. It just has that beautiful grain naturally. So my scroll saw allows me to get into every single little nook and cranny um, on the shape of the lake so that it really comes out looking just like the lake or just like the state in this instance. But today, since you are such special campers, we are going to be making dolphins. So I already have all these cut out, and I'm gonna show you how we cut out some more together. So today I'm gonna to be doing something called a stacked cut. A stacked cut just means that I can cut out multiple shapes at one time. I'm gonna set these over here. And so what I've done is I began by drawing a dolphin um, onto some plywood, okay? And then I traced her onto a piece of your wood. Okay, so I just took my shape and traced it. And you can see very faintly the outline there. And what I did is I cut a bunch of pieces of wood all the same size. Now you can see the dolphin doesn't take up all of the wood and I'll actually use these small parts for something else because I really don't like to waste wood. It's too precious and too beautiful. So I can usually do three at a time. I've already done all of these for you guys. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a stack of our wood. So I'm gonna take these three pieces that are exactly the same size. I'm gonna stack them together like this. And I'm gonna tape all the way around the edges once they're perfectly lined up. And then I will be able to cut, cut out three dolphins at one time. Pretty cool, huh? And so I've put my tape all the way around the edges and I'm gonna smooth it really well, because if I was cutting and the, the three pieces came apart, we might lose a dolphin, that would be bad. I wanna make sure all dolphins survive the stacked cut on the scroll saw. Okay, so now I have three pieces of wood all taped together with my dolphin drawn on there, and I'm gonna cut it out. But first, it's very important to use protective equipment when you, you, when you work with wood. The first is my mask which we're all kind of getting used to these days, right? So I'm gonna put my mask on, I'll do it last this time so you can still hear me well enough. Um, because whenever you sand or cut wood, little particles come out from what you're cutting and it's not healthy for you to breathe. So, um, so that's why the mask is very important. And next is my headphones. They protect my ears. And this isn't the loudest machine in the shop, but sometimes it makes a big sound if I break um, if I break one of my blades, which hopefully I won't do today, but if it does, it sometimes scares me. So I like to wear my headphones. 
And the next is my glasses. If any little pieces of wood fly up from the machine as I'm working, we don't wanna hurt my eyes. So I'll get all suited up here. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, so I've just completed my stacked cut and I was able to just pop my dolphins out of the shape that I cut here, pop them right out, and from this stack of wood, I have my three dolphins. Pretty cool, huh? So each of you today are gonna be getting a little square of 220 sandpaper. The number on the back of sandpaper just tells you how fine it is, and 220 is pretty fine. When you paint or stain something, you wanna make sure the wood is nice and smooth, so I'm gonna give you a little tip. When wood grows, there's something that, when it's cut, that you can see called wood grain. You can see on this little guy, do you see the lines running horizontally? So that is the wood grain. And when you sand him, I'll, I will have lightly sanded them for you. So remember how I told you it wasn't very safe to breathe in wood? Um, I'll get most of that dust off for you. And you can just very lightly, you wanna sand back and forth in the direction of the wood grain, okay? So for this guy, I'd go back and forth. And it's okay to kind of scrub it a little bit back and forth. Oh, my doggie's upset. Okay, come here, Daisy. Um, what we don't wanna do is go up and down when the grain goes back and forth. And if you do, it's not a big deal. It'll just make it um, not quite as smooth for when you paint it. So you're all ready to go. So we talked a little about, bit about sanding them and sanding in the direction of these lines, which is called your wood grain. So once it's all sanded, you can feel it and it'll, it should feel pretty smooth. And then you're ready to paint. So you all have a, one of these sets of um, Color Swell watercolors with a brush in there for you. And then you just need a cup of water. So an important thing to think about when you're starting your watercolor painting, you might not know, but watercolors um, work really well on wood and it's because wood is porous and the watercolors just kind of soak right in um, and they don't get all goopy and clumpy like um, acrylics or tempera might get on your wood cutout. But what you want to do first is begin by adding um, a little bit of water in each of these wells. Okay, this is a well of pigment and the pigment is going to dye your water, hence why it's called watercolor. So a little rhyme that you can remember when you, whenever you use watercolor <clears throat> is paint with the puddle. So you want to have a little puddle on top of each of your wells. Okay, so I'm just putting a little drop of water. Let's see if I can get a little closer so you can see. And I'm just kind of mixing it in so that there's a little orange puddle on top there. And now a little yellow puddle. green puddle, and so on. So I always want to paint with the puddle, and if I run out of my puddle, if my I don't have any water sitting there on top of my well anymore, then it's time for me to paint more, put more water on there, so that there's always a puddle. If I start digging into the pigment, um, it's not gonna look as, as nice, but also it gets a little chunky when you do that. So we just want to dye the water right on top and make our own water color, okay? So I'm gonna do a cool effect on my dolphin. I'll try to set this up so that you can see me, called an ombre effect. An ombre is when color gradually changes from one color to another. Can anybody think of any ombre colors that you see in nature? Any places that you see them? I bet your teacher has some ideas. Well, the one that you might think of quickly is a sunset. So we see the color change from yellow to red to pink to orange, and then maybe way up high there's some blue or green up in the sky. When you look out at the ocean, you can see dark, dark blue and then green, and it might look almost black close to the horizon. So those are ombre effects, O-M-B-R-E. 
So on my dolphin, I'm gonna go from blue to green and I'm just gonna wet my brush and put it right in my color. And some people, if you wanna get fancy, some people like to mix their colors up here in the lid. So I might make a bluish green. I might put a little bit of blue and a little bit of green to make sort of a teal color. Isn't that a pretty color? And then I'll show you how I'm gonna paint it. You're all ready to go. We have all of your dolphins right here. And I can't wait to see what you create. Please tag me or send a picture. They're gonna be beautiful and I hope you have a great time. Bye.